All right, welcome back to the channel. This will be an extra special episode today where we'll be doing some legit science because we have two samples to look at. The barrels we'll be looking at today are 16 inch Cold Hammer Forge lightweight barrels from Daniel Defense. So we will go over the specs, take a look at things on the bench with some gauges and a borescope, and then head to the range to shoot some 30 shot groups and see how both these barrels do. Here we go. All right, before we get into it, I'd like to introduce Danger Space LLC, who is the first sponsor of the channel. They are an online accessories retailer that offers products from V5 Systems, Reptilia, and others. They have fast shipping and competitive prices, and you can save a little bit more if you use the code PM2025 during checkout. But anyway, give them a look and let me know what you think. And a big thank you to Danger Space LLC for helping to support the channel so that I can put out more content. So these barrels were both loaned to me by a very generous subscriber. They were both bought in December of 2020 and were loaned to me in brand new, never fired condition. The barrels are 16 inches with mid-length gas, a 5.56 nano chamber, and 1 and 7 twist. They are cold hammer forged from 4150 chromoly vanadium steel and have an A4 barrel extension with some polished feed ramps. The edges on the feed ramps have also been chamfered, which is a detail that isn't on every barrel. Moving along, the barrels have a chrome line bore with a phosphate exterior finish and a weight just over 1.5 pounds, making these barrels very much on the lighter side of things. Coming in at just under 0.1 pounds per inch of barrel length, the barrel has six groove rifling and both barrels have a gas port size of 73 thousandths, which is on the smaller side. And if you look closely, you'll see that they chamfer the outside of the gas port, which is a nice touch. And speaking of chamfers, the crowns on these barrels have a nice deep chamfer on them, which is something that I personally like, mainly just because I think it looks good. I don't think it'll perfect formants much at all, but it could potentially protect the crown a little bit better for the times when you don't have a muzzle device on your barrel. Anyway, next up, we'll do a bit of an inspection. All right, moving on to the bench. We will first take a look at the barrel extensions and see if we can start to pick apart any differences between these two barrels. And the barrel extensions are coming in on the smaller side compared to the other ones that I've measured so far. Anyway, moving on to the gas block journal. Both of these barrels measured exactly the same, which is kind of neat. And the gas block journal size is right around all the barrels that I've measured so far. Next is the throw gauge. Both barrels measure somewhere between a 1 and a 2 on this gauge. And again, these barrels are in new, unfired condition when I received them. And here's a chamber gauge that checks to see if the throat was cut to a proper depth. And both barrels pass. Next, we'll check headspace starting with a Forster 556 NATO minimum headspace gauge. And both barrels pass. And here's a 223 no-go gauge. And it's pretty tight with both barrels but both barrels fail this gauge. And last, here is a 223 field gauge, and both barrels are not able to close with the 223 field gauge. So both barrels are well within the min and max ranges for 556 NATO headspace. All right, next up is the bore scope. This was taken as the barrels were delivered to me before any cleaning, so there is a bit of stuff in these barrels. Anyway, here's a look around the throats, which look fine to me. The chrome looks nice, and the start of the rifling looks pretty consistent. And here's a few inches further up towards the muzzle, and we can get a good look at the rifling. There is also some copper here from the factory test fire, but the rifling looks to be well formed. And here we are at the gas ports, which look to have been chamfered, which is nice and not something you see too often. And last, here's a look at the crowns, which have a nice deep chamfer on them. And yeah, everything looks good up here too. The barrels were fit into upper receivers. The barrel nuts were greased and torqued to 40 foot pounds. The barrels were cleaned prior to this range trip. Free float handguards were used. No muzzle devices were attached to prevent possible interference. A three inch bag rider was used to help steady the rifle. An A5 receiver extension is used with an A5 dash rail buffer and spring cove green spring. The trigger is a Geisley super dynamic three gun trigger. A few rounds were fired prior to shooting the first group to foul the bore and zero the scope. The scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44. Scope ring torque was confirmed at 15 inch pounds. Magnification is set at 20. And parallax was set and confirmed with a head nod test. For velocity data, I'll be using a Pro Chrono DLX. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard. This is an accelerometer that will grade each shot based on how steady the rifle was. And the groups will be measured by the Ballistic X app. I'll be shooting 30 shots per group. All 30 shots per group will be fired consecutively over a period of about four minutes. This will help me to determine how the barrel will perform in a match or practical type scenario where the barrel may get some heat into it. The barrel will be cooled with a chamber chiller and leaf blower between each group. All groups will be fired at 100 yards. The point of aim is a small circle at the bottom of the target with the point of impact set a few inches above to preserve the aiming point. The rifles will be shot from the prone with a front rest and a rear bag. Wind will be monitored with a ribbon. Each group will take about four minutes to shoot and will be edited down to about 15 seconds. I'll be shooting three different groups per barrel. First, we'll start with Winchester 55 grain M193. We'll move up to Frontier 556 68 grain BTHP. And last, I'll finish up with Federal Gold Medal 77 grain Sear Match Kink. All right, let's do it. 
Okay, starting off with a cheap training ammo. I never expect this ammo to shoot very well, but I use something like this for close range stuff. Anyway, the shooting felt fine on my end with both barrels. The brass was ejecting forward and the recoil felt a bit more than I was expecting. I could have probably bumped up to an H2 buffer, but anyway, wind was mild, no malfunctions. I think the electronics captured all the data. So we'll finish up with this group and then take a closer look. All right, so here's a quick look at the individual Mantis and Velocity data. And you'll notice that I had two chronos running for barrel one. I only had one chrono running for barrel two. So I just use the data from the DLX, which has been corrected for the muzzle velocity versus the distance I had it from the muzzle. Anyway, I don't really see anything out of the ordinary here. So we will go ahead and move along. The advertised velocity for the Winchester M193 is 3180 out of a 20 inch barrel. And I got 3,003 feet per second and 3032 out of these 16 inch barrels, which is a little more than 1,100 foot pounds of muzzle energy which makes this load a little bit on the warmer side of things. And the velocity SDs were a bit high at 41 and 30 feet per second. Moving on to the groups, the group for barrel one was a bit wider than it was tall, and the group for barrel two was a bit narrow and tall, but all the shooting felt fine on my end, and the Mantis and velocity data didn't really show anything either. So all these shots are gonna stand for the groups, and here's what we end up with. Barrel two had better velocity numbers, and barrel one had better numbers for the group. Overall, I'd say these results look pretty similar to me, Velocity difference of 29 feet per second, mean radius was different by 0.143, and the average 5 and 10 shot group breakdowns were pretty close. But uh, let me know what you guys think, if you would consider this uh, close or not. And anyway, we're going to move along to our second group with the Frontier 68 grain BTHPs. Alright, so Frontier 68 grain BTHPs, I would consider this a mid-tier load. It usually does okay, and it's not too expensive. Shooting felt fine on my end again, nothing out of the ordinary. The brass was again ejecting forward. Anyway, wind was pretty calm, no malfunctions, the data collection went good. And yeah, everything pretty much went as planned with uh, no surprises. So, we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Alright, here is the individual data for the Frontier 68s. And again, nothing looks out of the ordinary. So, let's take a look at an overview of the velocity. The advertised velocity for this load is 2960 out of a 20 inch barrel, and I got 3000 feet per second and 3019 out of a 4 inch shorter barrel, which resulted in a muzzle energy of over 1350 foot pounds, which is really, really hot. And also remember that with barrel one, I was running two different chronographs and there was no significant difference between the two. So this wasn't a chronograph error and this happened with two separate barrels. So I think this points towards the ammo. And speaking of, here's a look at some of the brass. It really doesn't look as bad as I thought it might. There is a bit of cratering and ejector swipe, but nothing too extreme, at least from what I can see. But uh, you can let me know in the comments if you see something else or feel differently. Anyway, getting back to it, the SDs were pretty good for this load with uh, SDs of 20 and 14 feet per second. And moving on to the groups, both groups had a shot or two significantly outside the rest, but the Mantis and the Velocity data didn't really show anything. So this is how the uh, groups ended up. They're round-ish, plus a couple outliers. Uh, anyway, here is how the different barrels compared. Barrel 2 had better velocity numbers again, and the group performance was kind of split depending on how you want to look at things. The 30 shot group was better with barrel number 1, and the 5 and 10 shot group breakdowns were better with barrel number 2, which is a little bit odd, but I double-checked everything, and this is how the numbers worked out. Anyway, let's move on to our last group. For the last load, we have Federal Gold Medal 77 Grain Sear Match Kings. The Federal Gold Medal loads usually shoot pretty good for me, but the velocities are generally on the lower side. Anyway, there is no major issues with anything on my end of the shooting. Wind was pretty minimal, like it usually is. There were no malfunctions, and both velocities felt a little bit higher than what I would prefer. Anyway, we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Alright, here's a quick look at the individual velocity and mantis data, and there's not a whole lot to see here, so we will move ahead to the velocity overview. The Federal Gold Medal has an advertised velocity of 2720 out of a 24 inch barrel, and the 16 inch Daniel Defense barrels got 2439 and 2443, resulting in a little over 1000 foot pounds, which makes this load a little bit on the colder side. Velocity SDs were pretty solid though, at uh, 27 and 18 feet per second. And moving on to the groups. The group for barrel number one looks a little bit wide, and the group for barrel number two looks pretty circular. There doesn't really look like there's anything out of the ordinary with either group, so we'll look at the overview. And this was a clean sweep by barrel number two with better velocity and group numbers. The velocity numbers were really close, and the group numbers were pretty close also, or at least in the same ballpark, I would say. Anyway, let's take a look at the overall results.
All right, so this chart is organized by my AZ score, which is the maximum distance where the calculated group size would fit into a USPSA A zone. And I'll put up the formula for those of you who are interested. Anyway, here's what we ended up with. Both barrels seem to favor the same ammo with both barrels posting their best scores with the Federal Gold Medal 77 grain SMKs. And barrel number two had the best group overall with an AZ score of 232 yards with barrel one coming in at 194 yards. After that came the 68 grain Frontier load with barrel number one at 159 yards and barrel number two at 138 yards. And M193 unsurprisingly had the worst groups with barrel number one at 127 yards and barrel number two at 112 yards. All things considered, I say these barrels performed fairly equally. Obviously the performance wasn't exactly the same between the two, but at least in my opinion, they weren't radically different. Anyway, let's see how they compare to the other barrels that I've shot so far. All right, so here's the leaderboard with all the barrels plus the jackal that I've shot so far. So obviously this list isn't completely 100% scientifically valid. I'm certainly not a perfect shooter, so I may have shot some barrels slightly better or worse than others. Also, the barrels may have shot some different ammo and in slightly different conditions and a bunch of other things as well, but I think I can still learn something from this information. Anyway, the Daniel Defense barrels came in 6th and 12th place, which kind of sounds like a big difference, uh, but it's only a 38-yard difference in the AZ score between 6th and 12th. So, take that however you want to. If you want to compare the Daniel Defense barrels to a similar barrel on here, I only really have the Geisley, that would be the most similar, and that ended up in fourth place. Here is a comparison with the best groups from the Daniel Defense Barrels and the Geisley Barrels. You can see what that looks like on paper. Both the Geisley and Daniel Defense Barrels are Cold Hammer Forge Chrome Lined with 1-7 Twist, and all three of these barrels shot the Federal Gold Medal 77 Grand Series Match Kings, and this is how they ended up. Alright, I have several other barrel videos coming up, but I will also start working on a few other types of videos as well, so be on the lookout for those. Also, let me know your thoughts about the Daniel Defense Barrels in the comments below, and make sure you subscribe because there is a lot more content on the way. I'll see you next time. Later.